Hello pet lovers, welcome back. In the last video, I spoke to you about the benefits of performing massage and manual therapy for your pet. I also demonstrated to you on how you can give your pet a really nice massage for their front legs and their back legs. So if you haven't watched the video, here's the link. You can watch it right after watching this video. For those of you who are new to the channel, hi, I'm Dr. Priya. I'm a rehabilitation veterinarian based here in Singapore. So as a continuation to our previous video, let's go ahead and talk about your pet's back. Your pet's back is extremely prone to injury. Why? This is because of the way our pets are shaped. Dogs and cats have their pets horizontal to gravity. Therefore, the muscles have to work harder to resist the force of gravity to maintain your pet's posture when they're standing and moving. The muscles also need to be able to generate force at the same time to carry your pet through a variety of movements such as climbing, jumping, twisting, playing, literally everything a dog and cat would do. And is it me or are dog's backs just seem to be getting longer and longer? Seriously, how much longer can they actually get? <sighs> Let us take a moment to appreciate the sheer awesomeness of your pet's spinal structure. So there are two types of spinal injury that can happen to your pet. One is musculoskeletal and the other one is neurological. Musculoskeletal injuries tend to involve the muscles and other soft tissues of the spine as well as the bones, whereas neurological injuries tend to involve the spinal cord and nerves. The most common musculoskeletal injuries in dogs are spondylosis and muscular strain and sprain injuries. Spondylosis is essentially arthritis of the spine which affects aging dogs, causing stiffness and painful movement, whereas muscular strain and sprain injury tend to occur in more active dogs or dogs Dogs with mobility issues such as hip dysplasia who tend to overuse this group of muscles. As for neurological conditions, this can include intervertebral disc disease IBDD, degenerative conditions such as degenerative myelopathy or degenerative lumbosacral stenosis, some forms of cancer as well as other inflammatory spinal cord conditions. All of these conditions can cause back pain and stiffness so it's extremely important to massage and stretch the spinal muscles. Now that you've learned why your pet's back is prone to injury and some of the injuries that can affect their spine, we are ready to learn some techniques to help care for them. When it comes to caring for your pet's back, there are two muscle groups that you need to be aware of, the epaxial muscles and the hypaxial muscles. So Bella is here to demonstrate. The epaxial muscles are the muscles that run along the top of the spine, whereas the hypaxial muscles are the muscles that run along the side and the bottom of the spine. Bella! You're going! Okay, she's running away now. The epaxial muscles are important for bending the body sideways, moving the body forward, and they're also used for balance, whereas the hypaxial muscles do play a role in stabilization of the posture, but also they bring the neck downwards and tilt the pelvis under the body. Okay, so first I'm going to show you how to give your pet a back massage, and then I'm going to demonstrate on how to do the stretches. Step 1. Before you start, what you want to do is get yourself organized. To make sure that we cover the entire spine evenly, we're going to divide the spine into three. The neck, the upper back, and the lower back. You can start with a general stroking technique to prepare your pet for a massage, but when you actually get into it, I would recommend going segment by segment. Step number 2. Get familiar with stroking styles. We are starting with an athel rush technique where we're stroking the body with very light pressure. You can stroke in two directions, one going down along the spine towards the tail and the other going down towards the belly. According to the size of your pet, you may use the tips of your finger, your entire palm or even just your thumb. This massage technique relaxes your pet and prepares them for deeper tissue massage. Once your pet is relaxed, we can use the following techniques to offer more relief to their aching muscles. Circular pressure. This is a technique where I generally use my thumb and massage the muscles in a circular motion using medium pressure. This massage technique is really helpful when you find knots in your pet's muscle. Kneading. This is a technique where you're using your entire hand to knead your pet's muscles like dough. Cat owners, you know when your cats do their biscuits. This is exactly what a kneading massage technique is. Generally, this technique is saved for larger muscle groups such as muscles of the neck and lower back. Squeezing. This is a technique where you're picking up the skin, muscle and connective tissues with your fingers and squeezing them gently. It's a great technique to break up the tension between the different layers of muscles and connective tissue. You can combine this technique with another technique called rolling. Pick up and roll boys, pick up and roll. Knuckling. This is a technique where you're just using your knuckles to apply pressure to deeper tissues. You can use your knuckles to stroke as well as do the circular movements. The caution is to remember to be gentle as there will be a lot of focus pressure at the point of your knuckle. 
You do not have to use all the techniques together, simply select the techniques that are the most natural to you when you're massaging your pet. Also, feel free to go back and forth between the different stroking styles. Often when I'm performing massage for a patient, after a while of performing deep tissue relaxation techniques, I will ease up on the pressure and just go back to a gentle stroking technique to give the pet's body a little bit of a break. Here's a massage tip for you. Go easy on the pressure. More pressure does not necessarily mean better relaxation. Every pet's body and its tolerance for pain is different. Especially when there's an injury in the area that you're massaging, be sure to be gentle when you're performing the massage. As mentioned before, if you're using your knuckles or your thumb to give your pet a massage, be sure to go really easy on the pressure because there is a lot of force being concentrated on a very tiny surface area. So instead of actually leaving them feeling better, you're probably going to make them feel worse and that's not what we want. Now let's get into the stretches. Did you know that there are no passive back stretches in dogs? All the stretches that we're going to be doing are active back stretches and that's what's going to make it so much fun! The first stretch that we're going to do is stretch the sides of your pet's spinal muscles. Using a treat, we are going to slowly get them to bend to the right and to reach for the treat. Make sure you keep the treat close to the body so they are bending their spine rather than stepping to the side to reach for the treat. If your pet is unsure about this movement, start with small movements and just get them to turn their head 30 to 40 degrees to the right and left, then slowly increase the angle of the turn. You may also need to help keep your pet stable as they bend their spine to reach for the treats. If they can't do the exercise standing, they can do it first in a sitting position or a lying down position. The next stretch is to reach forward for the treat. This is mainly to stretch the top of their spine. The key to performing this stretch effectively is to make sure that your pet is only moving their head and neck to stretch forward for the treat and not stepping forward with their front legs. Another stretch to stretch the top of your pet's neck is hold the treat between their front legs and get them to reach downwards for the treat. <laughs> Alright guys, time to take some action and give your pet the very well-deserved spa treatment. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you missed the last video where I shared with you some tips on how to massage your pet's leg, here is the link. Go and watch the video now. This is Dr. Freya helping you care for your four-legged friends. Until the next video.